Hi, this is Dave from Hector Smokehouse and today I'm going to be cooking some um, beef short ribs. So these short ribs are um, grass fed, so they come from a company called O'Connor Beef in Gippsland uh, in Australia, which is near Melbourne. Um, they do fantastic beef ribs. What you'll see when I actually trim them is how highly marble they actually are. So I'm going to go through the process of how to trim them properly, um, putting them onto the uh, Weber, so they're going onto a Weber kettle. Um, I'm going to be using a slow and sear today. So I'm going to be doing offset cooking and um, yeah, we'll go through the temperatures, go through the prep and we'll show you the whole cook and show you what they look like at the end. So the setup I'm using today in the uh, Weber One Touch is a slow and sear. This is a slow and sear plus. Um, so you can see in there there's a charcoal basket where all the charcoal goes. Here there's a reservoir for water. So I'll just show you. So there's a reservoir between, so that's obviously going to keep the heat from this side so for indirect cooking and I'm also got a pan in the bottom uh, with water in as well and again that'll um, help with drippings, dripping into there but also uh, keeping it nice and moist in there. So that's going to be the setup that I'm going to use today for doing these beef ribs. So this is the, um, the, the short ribs, there's about five ribs in these, these have come from um, so Gippsland from O'Connor Meats and you know you can see in there the amount of marble in that they've got actually in the rib themselves which is really strong so what we're going to do is we're going to trim off all of the silver skin and all of the fat off the top and we're going to take off the, the membrane off the back which is going to come off quite easy and trim between the ribs um, and then we should be good to go to put the rub on afterwards so we'll go through that process now um, and start taking everything off. So you can see after the trim on the top, pretty good, got some nice marbling um, in the meat there. A few bits here that are a little bit more fatty on the edge, but I'm not going to trim them right down and a little bit over this side, but overall uh, pretty good and really nice marbling going along. So what we're going to do now is start to take off this membrane. Good idea use a bit of paper towel and if you get a bit of paper towel you can actually remove it quite easily. So it comes off. But obviously you can still see um, some of the membrane in here. There's like another layer of membrane. So I'll even have another go at trying to pull that next level off, which looks like it's going to be a bit more difficult. And yeah, this one's not as, as tough as the last piece. So it's not as keen to play ball. So what we can do is we can take more of this off um, and then try and start to clean between, between the bones as well. I think it's going to be easy just to clean between the bones. So I managed to get my fingers underneath this next level of membrane. This is a real stringy piece of membrane so I'm trying to slowly peel it off, proving quite difficult. but. Yeah, that's the way I'm trying to get it, get this off now, is just by using my fingers. And it does, it keeps ripping off a bit. And hopefully I can make these ribs look really nice when I get the rest of this off. So this is the rib all trimmed up. Um, so you can see underneath, taking out some of the, a lot of the membrane in between, so just gonna get really nice chunks of meat. Clean the bones up a little bit. Um, you can see on there a lot of the marbling in the O'Connor beef. And there's the, the top. And again, some really nice marbling around here. Um, and some great marbling in terms of the meat. And very little fat in there. So these are going to end up being really nice ribs. Um, what we're going to do to these is um, I'm going to put some Worcester sauce on as a binder. I'm going to do some salt and pepper 
um, some garlic granules and a little bit of smoked paprika and then they'll be going onto the Weber. So that's the plan. Okay, so these actual boards um, are really good to use. These are um, cardboard chopping boards. Um, in the United States, you can buy them from Big Popper Smokers, and I think also from a place called Smoky Mountain. Um, in Australia, where I am, you can buy them from Barbecues Plus. Um, I use them all the time. A uh, real benefit of these is, obviously, you're not making a mess everywhere. You can clean your surface down really quickly. These are disposable. But also, if you're doing meat juices or you're doing something like this, mixing, um, putting rub on, you can curl it up so that you can turn all of the rub uh, residue in here without having to make a mess all over the countertop. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going simply, I'm going to use a little bit of uh, Worcester sauce. Um, and that's going to be sort of my banding agent, just to sort of make the salt and pepper mix just sort of stick onto everything that I'm doing. So a little bit of Worcester sauce on there. I'm going to start off with a, a dusting of um, garlic granules. These are garlic granules from Costco. So very simple. Put them over the edge of the ribs. So just some garlic granules for a bit of flavour. Goes into there. Then I've got some salt and pepper. This salt and pepper at the moment, I've mixed um, three parts pepper, so three tablespoons of pepper, to two parts salt at the moment. And I'm just going to give them a sprinkle, obviously. All I'm really bothered about is um, those areas between the ribs to get some on there, and then to actually get some on the ends as well. Um, and that's the main place I'm going to be really bothered about actually getting the salt and pepper. So just making sure there's a good coat on there. And a bit in the middle. Touch on the ends. And that'll do for that side. Spin them over. This is going to be the main side, obviously. Um, and what we're going to do here is start off again with just a little bit of Worcester sauce to make everything stick to the meat. So, some people use mustard, um, I do one sometimes, sometimes people use oil, sometimes people use um, all sorts of different things, but I don't mind using Worcester sauce on beef. I use it sometimes for this and also for brisket. So again, just a nice sprinkling of some garlic granules on there. And then we're going to hit it with a real nice thick crust of salt and pepper. So again, this is three parts pepper to two parts salt. That's actually in here. It should go nicely. And in here was three tablespoons of pepper, two tablespoons of salt. And that's probably worked out spot on for the ribs. Turn a little bit left, but I think I'll worry too much. Just make sure there's no really just sort of thick spots, hot spots of salt in there and then to finish off I'm just going to put a little dash hopefully he says of some smoked paprika on here as well so you just see a little bit of smoked paprika going on there and I reckon I'm just about good to go there so they should be good now and they'll be ready um, to go onto the smoker in a few minutes onto the Weber okay so we're going to quickly Put the, the beef rib on, which is nice. We've got it over the water, over the water pan, and uh, the meat's on. We've got the indirect cooking on the other side. Got the water barrier in the sear and slur. Um, so then it's just a case of leaving this. I'm gonna be running it around about 275 and um, it'll be cooked when it's cooked. So we'll come back later on and see what it looks like. So the ribs have been on for um, nearly like three and a half hours. So you can see what they look like at the moment. Um, so about three and a half hours. I'm going to give them a quick spritz. Um, don't need to do too much of this. This is probably the only time I'll do it. Maybe one more time, but that'll be it. Just all this is is a bit of apple juice which is good enough for what I'm doing. 
But yeah, so I'll just give them a quick spritz and probably um, see if I can give them a, a quick turn around. Just to make sure that they're an even cook both ways. So I reckon they're looking pretty good at the moment. So they're looking pretty good. Um, I think the I've been getting some decent smoke off some of this wood that I've got in there. So I'll just spin this piece over, get a bit more smoke going into it. So I'm just using cherry wood in terms of those. So I'll put that in. Spread this around. So yeah, should be pretty good. So there you go, that's where we're up to so far. Well, there you go. Um, the ribs have been on for six hours. Um, average cook has been around um, 270F, 270-280F. And the ribs are still only at 170, 175. So I've still got quite a bit to go. But the ribs are looking fantastic, um, but I reckon another two hours. So I reckon we're looking at an eight, nine hour cook, somewhere around there. So the ribs have been on the go now um, for just over nine hours. And here is like really tender. You can see it's falling through under its own weight. Um, so these are incredibly good. They've got a really nice crisp bark on. Still a little tiny bit of resistance there. Uh, that's about 200 and 4205 here is you can see about 2829 and um, 27227 around there so just a little bit more but geez these are really tender and the outside feels fantastic so I'll show you again in a few minutes and it should be nearly be done as you can see the temperature probe is falling in by under its own weight now so they're more or less ready and on top they've got a nice crispy back so I think they're ready to come off. So that's the, the rib finished and um, you can see it's got a, a nice crust on top of there. So we'll slice these up and have a look and see what they look like inside. The ribs had a very um, crispy back and were nice and tender inside. Um, tasted fantastic and, and was really flavoursome. Probably used the wrong knife when I cut them, um, but overall I was pretty happy with these ones. Um, so yeah, if you enjoyed the video, please hit the like button. Thanks for watching.